Good morning and welcome to PQA Stratford's first ever virtual cinema screening. It's Sunday the 7th of March 2021, it's 10am and it's time to get started. Hello Stratford and welcome to your cinema screening. I'm so excited that we can finally show you all of the films that you've all been working so hard on for the last year or so. They look fantastic. Um, so without further ado, get your popcorn, turn your mobiles on silent and enjoy your films. Hello, my name is Jake and I am the comedy and drama teacher from PQA Warwick. PQA Stratford, it has been the most wonderful privilege to watch your films as they have progressed from early stages of development all the way to the finished products. It has been truly impressive. The acting, the performances of all the supporting cast members, the direction, the camera work, I have been blown away. I'm so excited to see everything in this fantastic cinema screening. We can spell difficulty. You can spell difficulty if your life depended on it. She taught us where the poem. A poem? How sweet what poem would that be? Mrs. D, Mrs. I, Mrs. Mrs. F, F, I, Mrs. C, Mrs. U, Mrs. L, T, Y. Why are all of these women married? Mrs. D, Mrs. I, are meant to be cheating and spelling, not poetry. I cannot think of the life I mean for all these children to take so long to just grow up. You do it deliberately, just to annoy me. What's funny? Come on, spit it out. Speak up. I like a joke as more as the next fat person. No, that is not a snake, it's a newt. What did you say? It's a newt, Miss Trunchbull. Stand up, you villainous sack of goat slime! You did this! No, Miss Trunchbull. Did you act alone? Or did you have some help? I didn't do it. You didn't like the chokey, did you? Thought you'd pay me back? Well, I'll pay you back, young lady. What, Miss then it's not you piss worm! I didn't do it. Besides, even if you didn't do it, I'm going to punish you because I'm big and you're small and I'm right and you're wrong and there's nothing you can do about it. You're a liar and a scoundrel. Your father is a liar and a cheat. You're the most corrupt low lies in history in civilization. Am I wrong? I'm never wrong. In this classroom, in this school, I am God! Well, I don't know about you guys, but I thought that was fantastic. I loved getting to watch all of your films one by one and really appreciating everything that went into them. Um, and it kind of gave me that perfect moment to reflect on some of my, my favourite bits of one, you know, working with you as your film and TV teacher and then getting to see that final product on our screens at home. 
Um, I think one that really sticks out for me is Green's Matilda. Um, it, that also was a competition set by HQ and we had to recreate a scene from Matilda. Um, and when we saw what scene it was, we thought that is the best scene in Matilda for many reasons. And we just thought, you know what, we have to do this with Green Group, they're going to love it. Um, and all of you getting dressed up in those costumes as well. We've got Mr. Trunchbull and then Matilda and all those different elements. Um, and obviously I had to create that um, nude scene at home um, one brief little bit. Um, and I had to continuously throw a, a plastic lizard up onto my bathroom uh, light to get that one. So all of those memories coming back of, of you know, Mr. Trunchbull shouting at students and having a great time and really becoming a character there. Um, and it was just fantastic. I think that's what really sticks out in my mind is filming that Matilda project. And every single one of you were absolutely fantastic in that film. Um, really outstanding work uh, from Green Group there.
On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a phone under the Christmas tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two brand new pets and a phone under the Christmas tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three pairs of shoes, two brand new pets and a phone under the Christmas tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four calling kids, three pairs of shoes, two brand new pets and a phone under the Christmas tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five engagement rings, four calling kids, three pairs of shoes, two brand new pets and a phone under the Christmas tree. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me six glasses chinking, five engagement rings, four calling kids, three pairs of shoes, two brand new pets, and a phone under the Christmas tree. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven CDs spinning, six glasses chinking, five engagement rings, four calling kids, three pairs of shoes, two brand new pets, and a on the eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eight coins of chocolate, seven CDs spinning, six glasses chinking, five engagement rings, four calling kids, three pairs of shoes, two brand new pets, and a phone under the Christmas tree. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me nine ladies greeting, eight coins of chocolate, seven CDs spinning, six glasses chinking, five engagement rings. Four calling kids, three pairs of shoes, two brand new pets, and a phone under the Christmas tree. On the tenth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me ten stockings filling, nine ladies greeting, eight coins of chocolate, seven CDs spinning, six glasses chinking, five engagement rings. Four calling kids, three pairs of shoes, two brand new pets, and a phone under the Christmas tree. On the eleventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Eleven crackers cracking, ten stockings filling, nine ladies greeting, eight coins of chocolate, seven CDs spinning, six glasses chicken, five engagement rings, four calling kids, three pairs of shoes, two brand new pets, and a phone under the Christmas tree. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me twelve jumping children, eleven crackers cracking, ten stockings filling, nine ladies greeting, eight coins of chocolate, seven CDs spinning, six glasses chicken, five Brand new pets and a bow under the Christmas
Thank you for coming to see me. I appreciate you taking the time to come and discuss what's happening. Susan told me that you would be the one who could help me. Sure. No worries. So, did you bring what I asked? <laughs> Remember, you're in a safe space here. What was it like for you growing up? It was great. We were happy. My dad was great. We used to go on day trips a lot. I don't know, it was just unbalanced. I was always ignored. 
but was more comfort than Dad, really. He used to make me go out when I didn't want to. I didn't really notice much. Everything seemed cool. I was always off in my own world, really. Cowboy hat. Ta-da! It's my favourite. You seem fairly confident in this. Are you sure it's not subjective? No. No? I don't know. What was the moment when it all changed? It didn't change. I know what you're doing. It wasn't true. I don't know. After it all came out, I don't know. He was in a worse mood than usual when he threw them up at me. It seemed stupid. Her Royal Highness had spilled her drink, screaming at me as if it was my fault. And that's when he did it. He threw it at me like a javelin. It hurt so much. That's not my dad. I don't know if that was my dad. That was my dad. Thank you for coming to see me. I appreciate you taking the time to discuss what's been happening. No problem. I've talked to your stepchildren. Now, can you tell me what your side of the story? The record so far for the world's biggest spark is held by Belinda Melinda McNabb. It wasn't on purpose, she wasn't to blame. Her tummy just rambled and out the back came. <coughs> Belinda then instantly saw her mistake. The ground began trembling and starting to shake. was suddenly more of a roar. It busted the windows and knocked down the door. Her mother and father both covered their ears. Brother and sister were nearly in tears. Her puppy panicked and nipped as he fled. Her kitten just cowered and covered his head. The cars on the street began skidding and stopping. The shoppers in shops started dropping their shopping. The squeals all burrowed, the birds flew away. The sun disappeared for the rest of the day. As clouds began thundering all around town, the trees toppled over. Buildings fell down, tornadoes and hurricanes blew through the sky, the rivers flowed backward, the oceans ran dry. Volcanoes erupted from Perth to Peru, the Grand Canyon widened, Mount Everest grew. The earth started spinning a different direction, and worst of all, I lost my iPhone connection. Belinda was pretty and bad all right, but she was well-mannered and very polite. And that's why she knew it would all be okay when she said, excuse me, and went on her way. We are Red Group from Stratford upon Avon. Hello. Hello. We are here to deliver you Christmas joy in the form of messages and goodwill to the other PQA academies. First of all, we have Blue Group with some beautiful Christmas quotes to lighten up the mood for this year's Christmas. As we all deserve a cheery holiday, we hope you enjoy them as much as we do. The best of all gifts around any Christmas tree. The presents. A happy family. All wrap up in each other. Love the giver more than the gift. Thank you, Blue Group. Those words are as magical as they were poignant. Next, we have Green Group with further words of Christmas and joy. Christmas 
is a necessity. There has to be at least one day of the year to remind us that we are here for something else besides ourselves. Thank you, Greek Group. We really hope you enjoyed our words today. To all the academies in the UK and abroad, to all the people who keep Peaky Way running, teachers, principals, HQ, and to all the parents and carers and guardians, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Hey Phoebes, do you want the rest of that Pop-Tart? Hey, does anyone want the rest of this Pop-Tart? Hey, I might. Oh. Look, those stupid soda people gave me $7,000 for the thumb. And on my way over here, I stepped in gum. What is up with the universe? What's going on? Nothing, I think it's just nice when we're together. It's nicer when everyone gets to wear their underwear. Okay, okay guys, we need to talk. Wait, I'm getting a deja vu. No, I'm not. We have to talk. There it is! It's about Alan. There's really no easy way to say this, but I've decided to break up with him. There somebody else? No, it's just, you know, things change. People change. We didn't change. So that's it? It's over? Just like that? You know, you let your guard down, and you start to really care about someone, and I just... I... I can go on pretending. Okay! No. That wouldn't be fair to me, to you, or to Alan. Well, who wants fair? I just wanted things to go back to the way they were. I'm sorry. Oh, she's sorry! I feel better! And with the holidays coming up, I wanted him to meet my parents! <laughs> I'll meet someone else. There'll be other Alan's. Yeah, yeah right. right. You guys gonna be okay? We'll, we'll be okay. We're just gonna need a little more time. I understand. Wow. No one told you that was gonna be this way. Your life's a joke, you broke. Your love lives to your way. Sleeping Beauty pricked her thumb, started feeling overcome. Probably she would have died. As the witch had prophesied. But the fairies had her blessed, so she just got beauty rest. For a hundred and fifty years, she missed balls and film premieres. Charming came along, singing out a cheerful song. Kneeling down, he kissed her cheek, hoping that she'd wake and speak. Sleeping Beauty raised an arm, reaching for the snooze alarm, and her waking words were these. I just need five more minutes, please.
On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a warm jumping. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two Christmas shoppers and a pop.
Red Group, I think they did so fantastic with the projects we've had this screening. I think for me, it's got to be between the Friends and the horror films. I think taking Friends um, was fantastic because it's something that everyone is so familiar with. Whether you're a fan of the show or not, you're, you still know of the success of Friends and getting to see Red recreate that and think about their staging of their set and actually becoming those characters rather than sort of generating their own was amazing to get to see them do as young actors and they did it all so fantastically well and then the other end of the spectrum we've got a horror film um, and I think the, the makeup that they did was fantastic getting to have a makeup artist to come in and do those things with them and um, so to work with other people from the industry was fantastic um, and also to go from doing Friends which was sort of that comedic to then horror, I thought they transitioned so well and the horror was a really high quality from both groups and it was just fantastic all round.
I don't care who started it. Stop it. Sorry. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. I've just got you um, a pot of tea. I'm just going to put it over here. And I think I just saw your family arrive, so I'll send them straight in. Here you go, Mark. Wrong room. Um, do you know where my mum is? I need to give her a false tea. I think she's just a long girl. Yeah, she is. This is going down to room. Remember what I said? Come on. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm settling in nicely. Staff are all lovely. Finished unpacking my stuff. Speaking of which, look what I found. I lost that like five years ago. Five years ago, Grandma was still alive. Shh. Did I tell you how I met your grandmother? Yes, you have. Stop being rude. I love that story. Can you tell it to us again? Of course I can. Do you really think it's the right thing to do? Just let him. It all began when we were both alone, and our friends kind of pushed us, and then we bumped into each other. And by bumped in, I mean I was too scared, and she tapped me on the shoulder, uh, and then it all blossomed from there. onwards I knew that we were going to be together for the rest of our days or the rest of her days.
Nothing on me. Oh come on, what happened, Joey? Alright. No, we swore we'd never tell. No, never understand. We have to say something. I need to get it out. It's eating me alive. Monica got stung by a jellyfish. Alright, alright. I got stung. Stung bad. I couldn't stand. I couldn't walk. We were two miles from the house. We were scared. We were alone. We didn't think we were gonna make it. I was in too much pain. And and I was tired from digging a huge hole. And Joey remembered something. Yeah, I'd, I'd seen it on the Discovery Channel. Oh yeah, on the Discovery Channel, I've seen that. About how jellyfish, and if you... Ew, you peed on yourself. Ew. You can't oh. say that, you don't know. You weren't there. I thought I was gonna pass out from the pain. Anyway, I, I tried, but I couldn't bend that way, so... Ew. Ew. Oh, that's right. I stepped up. She's my friend and she needed help. If I had to, I'd pee on any one of you. But I couldn't. I, I got the stage fright. So I turned to Chandler. No! Joey <laughs> kept screaming at me. Do it! Do it! Do it now! Sometimes late at night, I can still hear the screaming. That's because I do it for my wall to freak you out. I told you that was we're gonna be this way Your life's a joke, you broke Your love lives to your way Um... I don't know if there's anyone specifically that inspired me to um, pursue a career in performing arts, but um, basically I knew I wanted to be in this profession from quite a young age. I always wanted to be a teacher, that was my main aim. I wanted to be a teacher from, I think it was from reception. So at home I'd have like all my dolls and tennis and I'd be physically doing, I'd write a register and be marking everyone present and stuff. So I always wanted to be a teacher. I think when I went to secondary school, so when I was in year seven, I then realised I wanted to be a drama teacher. Um, and I always did the school plays. Um, and then I then, when I left school, I went to university. Um, and then I, again, I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and then I was a teacher for quite a long time. And then I wanted to open my own performing arts school. And initially, before I set up PQA, 
I was opening up my own performing arts school with my name, not anyone else's name. Um, but then I was like, oh, why would anyone come to my school? Because there's obviously lots of different schools out there. Um, and then I realised that there wasn't much opportunities for people or children with learning difficulties or special educational needs. So what I was doing initially was setting up a performing arts school for people that had additional needs. Um, and then I heard of BQA because I hadn't heard of it beforehand and then thought to myself, oh my goodness, this is exactly what I want to do. Um, and then I had an interview. So to answer your question, I think the person that inspired me to pursue a career in performing arts would probably be my secondary school drama teacher. There's two of them. Um, and their names are Mrs Chamberlain and Miss Unit. And sadly, Miss Unit died very, very young. Um, and actually, I just set up PQA the year she died and um, PQA Warwick performed at her memorial concert. And then the second teacher, Mrs Chamberlain, she's just retired, um, she lives very close to me, so she knows what I'm doing. Um, so I'd say it's my teachers at secondary school. Um, there was a drama club at my primary school, and then from then on I really just developed this passion for performing, and I just love being on stage, so. There's a variety of actors I'd say inspired me, but the one that tops the lot, probably Ryan Reynolds. If I was to say someone that inspired me the most, there's a variety, but I have to pick Ryan Reynolds. What or who inspired you to pursue performing arts? Um, in primary school, there was um, sort of extracurricular, I suppose, club, and the drama teacher there really inspired me to continue it. Um, I think any person that's going or wanting to pursue a career in the world of performing arts needs to be realistic, that's the main thing. Um, some people think that because they go to a private performing arts school that they're going to always have a career in performing arts or always be on the stage or always be on the screen, that's not the case obviously. Um, I also think people need to decide whether they want to do it as a career or um, as a hobby, something they enjoy. Um, people sometimes say to me, oh, are you a failed actress? That's what a lot of people say, and a lot of younger people, like students, and I never wanted to be an actress. That was never my ambition. That was never my goal to be an actress. Um, I've always wanted to be a teacher, so like literally, like I said before, um, that was my ambition, and I've achieved that. Yes, I liked performing in plays, but I wouldn't want to do that as a full-time job. So. Um, I think that every single person, for example, that comes here to PQA Stratford, every single person obviously enjoys performing arts but doesn't necessarily want to go into the same area or pathway. Um, so to answer your question about what is the struggle, there's so many people competing for that one role. That would be my main thing is you need to be realistic, people around you need to be realistic and if you obtain a role within a performance or a film, you obtaining that role is an achievement. Even if, for example, people that went for the audition of Frozen, there'd have been thousands that went for Elsa. Obviously only one person got it. Other people would have been in the film and that's a proud moment for them. So don't, one thing that I would, would want to say is, when you receive a role, don't go through and count all the lines and say, oh, that's not very good. Everything in a production is good, whether you're the leading person, whether you're in the ensemble, whether you're running the box office, whether you're in charge of music, lights, do you know what I mean? Like, everyone needs to be involved, put that on, and everyone's role and responsibility is unique. Um, I think, because this is like a career that's very kind of like, you don't know, so it's just hard because you're not going to be the main character every time. So it's just learning to deal with that and kind of realising that sometimes you are just going to be the ensemble but you still play an important part in like the whole thing. So yeah, I think it's just learning to deal with that. <sighs> Probably the nerves of like doing dancing and stuff. PQA has helped me a lot with getting out of my comfort zone but I probably have to say my nerves. Um, for me I suppose it's confidence, like actually 
when I first joined PQA, I was quite unsure of myself because um, I was like, I'm actually good enough to do this. So yeah, confidence in getting up on stage and actually doing the stuff that you've learned and believing in yourself really. I suppose that's the struggles. So my end dream. So I would like for all of you to basically be happy um, and for you all to support each other. Um, the end dream for me, um, obviously like I love, I love my job anyway, um, so apart from the five academies that I have here, Warwick and Banbury, um, there will be a sixth academy, so PQA Stratford will be having an afternoon academy at some point. Um, the date is yet to be confirmed, but that is going to be happening. Um, I also run PQA Barbados, obviously I'm in England, so I don't, I'm not there all the time, but I go a few times a year, which is obviously good. Um, but one thing that I would say is that I don't teach PQA, even though I absolutely love being the principal, um, I'm obviously also do all the admin, I'm HR for the staff, um, I basically do everything, so I do photocopy and I do literally everything, which is fine, absolutely fine, no, no problem at all, but I don't teach you guys, and that's one thing that I massively, massively, massively miss, so um, I also teach in a secondary school, and that only happened, because um, before PQI I used to be a teacher for like 10 years, um, and I loved being a teacher, um, so I've also gone back into teaching just because I, I really miss it, so I taught drama and dance last year at a local secondary school um, and now I'm teaching media at the same school and I work there two days a week um, and I love that. So, and like I said before to you, my ambition was to be a teacher, which is what I did. And then I'm also going to be starting another job, uh, I'll start that on Monday, where I'm going to be lecturing at a university as well. So I'll be doing being a principal, teacher and a lecturer and luckily all of those jobs combined, if you add them all together, that's basically like a full-time job. Um, but I haven't really got like an end goal because I'm really happy with professional stuff. Um, I'm happy with how everything is. My, my main goal is for you guys to achieve what you want and for us lot to help you achieve it. That's, that's my main goal and that you lot are all happy. That's my main thing. If I had to say I had a dream, <laughs> It probably in performing arts, sorry. It probably have to be um, being a well-known actor that people talk about and know. I will always have a passion for performing and being on stage, and it will always be a hobby. But I don't think it will ever be something that I have a career in as of now. My biggest dream is to perform in Les Misérables as Ethany. That's always been like my biggest dream. <laughs> So, yeah. so um, obviously I'm slightly older than you guys, um, so when I was younger there was not many opportunities at all possible for performing arts or that I was aware of um, because my family, I'm the only person that's into performing arts out of my family, my family are basically squash players so every single weekend when I was younger I had to go to a squash club and I absolutely hated it. Don't get me wrong, I had a great childhood, but I'm not really into squash at all. Um, so, I can play it. Um, so, I would say now there's more opportunities for you guys, but also I'd kind of question myself and say, is that because I'm in it now, so I'm in the industry, so I'm aware of the opportunities, whereas um, people maybe, so for example, someone sat at home now with their family and their family aren't into performing arts, they might not know about PQA. But I'd say also because of the expansion and increasement of technology, people can know more. So when I was younger, oh my gosh, it makes me sound mild. The internet didn't exist. Um, whereas now, you just literally like look on your phone and be like, oh, performing arts schools, Stratford, and we'd come up. Whereas before, you couldn't do that. You'd have to like literally look through the yellow pages. Um, Goodness, um, or it was all word of mouth. 
or things that your teachers told you at school. And that's one thing that I would say about doing PQA is if I want to spread the word, obviously the social media, which is great, but not everyone's on social media, but also I would say my biggest boundary doing PQA is getting past that school door. So, for example, all the schools in Stratford, I have thousands of leaflets. When I first set up PQA Stratford, not every school would let me give, give out leaflets to students. And my argument was basically, well, how will children know about these opportunities? Because there could be loads of children, young people, looking for performing arts schools. But if that person doesn't allow me, for example, through the door to give a leaflet and the leaflet be given to them, they might not know about it. to the open day here and um, I just really enjoyed it and I quickly realised that this would be a good place for me to be able to develop my skills and get a lot of opportunities. Um, so yeah, and then I've just yeah, been coming. So I like PQA for a few reasons. I liked acting but uh, one of the main ones was sort of being forced to. It, it may sound wrong but I've grown to love PQA and and until I have to leave, I'd like to stay here. Debbie came into um, my school and from the moment I started talking to her, I loved the idea of it. Um, and I really wanted to do drama outside of school as something different. So that's why I joined. Hey Rach, how was it with your friends? Ah! Okay, how would you like some Tiki Death Punch? What's that? Well, it's rum. Okay. Okay. Well, since Phoebe's staying, we thought we'd have, you know, like a slumber party. We got trashy magazines, we got cookie dough, and we got Twister. Oh, oh, and I bought Operation. But I lost the tweezers, so we can't operate. But we can set the guy up. Um, Rach, um, it's, it's the Visa card people. Oh, God, what do they want? Could you please tell me what this is in reference to? They said there's been unusual activity on your account. But I haven't used my card in weeks. That, that, that is the unusual activity. They just want to know if you're okay. They want to know if I'm okay. Okay, let's see, let's see. Everyone I know is getting, the fucking guys took all my money, everyone's getting pregnant, and married, or promoted, and I'm getting coffee, and it's not even for me. Do they want to know if I'm okay? If that seems like I'm okay, tell them I'm okay. Okay? Uh, Rachel has left the building. Can you call back later? Alright. Let's play Twister. <laughs> Oh, 
Christmas. Oh, really good. My husband just treated me so much. The latest fashion. Do you think that's fashion? Well, yeah, it's like massive. It's still not practical. You have a point. What about you? Well, I've got this massive sequin sack thing. Oh, wait, how's that here? That's a stocking. Oh, well, yeah, of course it is, but it's not practical for a job. Your Majesty, please let me show you to your waiting room. Mom. You three on lunch duty. Bobby, I would like you to stay. Oh, Mom, I'm sorry I'm late. Here's your newspaper. Oh, please calm down. Please take her for a walk. Okay. That was fantastic they did so well they created that story themselves um, from a set of guidelines from a HQ competition and they just took it and ran and made this story you know completely independently and we started filming it like the following week and they were just fantastic from start to finish it's funny um, it's well thought out plot and we even managed to work with an actual animal in the film as well so that was fantastic to see them involved in every element of filmmaking through from writing to deciding the costumes to filming it um, and then being an animal handler on set as well so that was fantastic That's when uh, uh, my mum turned around and said, <laughs> that shouldn't happen. <laughs> uh, uh, what's the time? It's 1.30 and this is going to be late. <laughs> I just got a text off my mum that said uh, she's just a little bit late. Um, should we be here soon? Hopefully this will be fun. It better be, yeah. I'm sitting and waiting, I'm going for a walk. Oh, okay, see you later. Bye. 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 Just can get so moody sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I'm really impatient. Yeah. <laughs> guys, what was that? I'm I don't know. Okay, you guys all stay in. I'm going to go check on Beth. Shane, okay. you'll go? Trust me. Oh, I don't want you guys to get hurt. Okay. But if you okay. guys do, do No, trust me. <laughs> Come with me! I think I saw her! Where is she? It's locked. Ah! Where is she? I could swear she was round here. Well, if you've got to see her, then where's she gone? Sorry, I, I, 
I just don't feel well. What did you run about the tray? I think we should split up. Well, I forgot my phone. I'll go back and get it, and I'll see where Ben is. You do that. Um, I'm just gonna go. Okay, Not so we'll go to theatre. You, you two go together, and I'll go to the theatre and okay. see if they're there. I'll go back, Benny. Okay. Yeah, sure, bud. I didn't realise I'd have another visitor. So well, uh, they all fell for it. Ben! Jacob! Hi. Is that you? Yeah. Yeah. Where's Finley? Uh, he split off or something. Anyway, have you ever had any, uh, I'm guessing not luck on finding Beth? No, I was just calling for a name now. Are you okay? No, I'm feeling a bit ill. Oh, you're okay? Come here. Seriously. Serious. This is just all wrong. What's wrong? I can't comprehend what's happening, Jacob. It's just... I'm sorry. Look, look over there. Look at that building. That is where you single-handedly killed four people. I guess I did. And you've had the grand prize of living. You're a monster. <laughs> I know.
can I come home now? Can I come home now? Can I come home now, Mum? Can I come home now, Mum? Can I come home now? I went to the schoolhouse. A change of clothes in a sack. We then walked to the station. But we didn't come back. We got onto a train. It headed due south. We got on off the train at a little town called Lauf. The war. It won't last long. You'll soon come back home. But it seems like forever. I must be brave and not moan. You can't come back home yet. The planes, they still fly. The bombs, they still fall. And the dangers still nigh. You'll have to be patient. One day you'll come home. When the war is over and we're all free to roam. They stay and stay for here, then we're we'll left behind. And the people looking after me are warm, good and kind. But home is where the heart is, and home is with you. Is it time for me to come back now and be back home with you? I used to play with my brother. We had such good fun. But he went to Alkali, and I'm here all alone. Last night, we had an air raid. I was frightened and alone. When will it all end, Mum? When can I come home? Yes, you can come home now. Yes, you can come home. Yes, you can come home now, son. You can come home now.
another one of my favourites is Puppets Post Office Film. Um, I thought it was fantastic to get to see the puppets acting in front of the camera, um, which was being operated by Red Group as well. So that was a fantastic element to see the two groups coming together, you know, our youngest and our oldest all working together in collaboration of this fantastic film. Um, so that was a real treat to get to sort of supervise and be a part of. So well done, puppets. You did a really good job. We need to go to work. Now we need to hurry up guys. You don't have any parcel stones. Yeah, that's not fair. My classroom's really noisy. My classroom is very quiet, so I have good children. My classroom's really Delivering all these parcels. Me too. Good work, boys. Uh oh. It's got my parcel. You've got my parcel. You've got my parcel. The parcels have been returned. I just wanted to say a big well done to every single student um, at Stratford PQA. You, you did amazingly. Every single second of hard work is worth it. You know, your films are extremely high quality and you did amazing. From whether you're working behind the camera or in front of it, you did amazing and you should be so proud of yourselves. And I can't wait for the next cinema screening. We ask that Poppets and Greens do now not watch the next film just because of um, the content of the film. So please do not watch the next film for Poppets and Greens. But if parents want to stay in the room until it's finished, that would be great. Thank you so much. Seek to harm, intimidate, or coerce someone perceived as vulnerable. Hello. Hello. Well, I haven't really been badly bullied, but I have. In primary school, not long ago, there was this one girl who used to be very like, oh, like kind of show showy off in sassy, yeah. Um, and she used to kind of like gossip behind people's back. She didn't 
necessarily do it to me so much, she just did it to so, so many of my friends and it just got me upset. Bullying to me is just like a person seeing another person and just thinking they don't look nice and all of a sudden just making fun of them really. She kind of did, she kind of got me like, she didn't get me scared to go to school, she just got me upset like to hang out with my friends because she was, she was one of my close friends but she also wasn't at the same time because she was a very mean girl and it, yeah. I would literally just say like don't listen because it's just a waste of time and they can get into your brain and you can actually do serious damage. So. Uh, no. Not really, no. Well, I think when somebody's trying to harm somebody else, Uh, probably my mum, my dad, or maybe my teacher. Have fun, live life. Yes, I have. Um, well, over the period of years that, because of my last name, people have called me things I wish I wasn't called. Um, I'll define it as someone who doesn't like someone else because of how they look or something. And then they go to irritate them and harm them. I'll just say, try to ignore them, but if they don't stop, then tell someone. Um, I'll just say, just ignore all the people you don't like and you know they don't like you. I, no, I've not been bullied before. Yes, multiple of my friends have been bullied before. Uh, when someone is constantly trying to harm or upset someone. I told my mum and then they would tell their parents if they were all right. Uh, just be kind and have fun. Not necessarily. Yeah. It's where someone who is like, who maybe have like difficulties or like looks different or like, um, like, like, diff yeah, just different, like they see them at different to someone else. Someone doesn't like that and that person probably has insecurities about themselves. I would just tell them to just, there's always like a way out, it's always going to like get better um, but it might not get better at this moment in time but it will get better and there are people that will help you. Well, just, just, yeah, just have fun, just do, just be like, just be whatever, just be what you want to be and just do what you want to do, stuff like that. Um, there are a lot of comments made over quite a few years that made me doubt myself a lot and lose a lot of confidence in myself. Someone who seeks to harm someone else due to that person thinking that the other is inferior to them. Um, 
I talked to my parents um, a little bit and they helped me find other people to talk to um, and in school it would be a teacher who would then sort of pass me on to another teacher who would pass me on to another teacher so quite a few people I spoke to about things but Mainly that, like, don't believe the comments because a lot of them aren't true and you should be confident in who you are just because you're different to someone else doesn't mean that you're wrong in the way that you act. So, yeah, just ignore the comments mainly. I have. Um, it's just kind of, it seems like every day there'll be a new, you know, comment, new thing, new this and, you know, I'll try and hide away and then I'll get something else will come up by the time I've, you know, come back and it's, it's, it's not so much physical as verbal, uh, but I feel like sometimes verbal can, uh, well definitely for me, hurt a lot more than physical does. Bullying is purposefully trying to make someone else feel less than you are by use of insults or you know emotional you know some form of emotional pressure or physical uh, like violence. I'd say ignore them. And I know that's such a like a generic thing to say because you know it's so hard to ignore someone when they're um, you know when they're what seems like after you all the time. But you really you just need to know that what they're saying is worthless. Um, it means nothing, and it's probably just because they feel like they're missing something in themselves that they need to target you. So um, so yeah, just just know that. You're, you need to just stay strong and just ignore what they say. I'd say don't. I, I retaliate a, a lot. I retaliate very easily. I I lack any form of skill when it comes to controlling my temper, and uh, I feel like uh, I tell myself to go and um, just. Instead of reacting to them, keep it and then you can you can let that frustration and anger out somewhere else because if you let it out to them, it's just going to end badly for you and either that you'll get in trouble for doing something that you wouldn't have done or um, or you'll you know you'll get they'll just make it worse because of something that you've said to them. Whether you like it or not, someone you know will have experienced bullying. Oh my days.
Yeah. Wait, what's the, what's the time? Man, it's been one hour. It's been an, an hour. He's Why probably just playing so a joke. No, guys, no, this isn't a joke. No, no it's no. not a joke. Someone needs to call he him. He said that he would be 10 call minutes. Him call him, call him, go, call him now. Oh, his phone's in his bag. Oh, right, that's it, no. We're, we're we have to split up. We have I'm, to going to look look, I'm going to look for him. No, no, it's it's you have to wait, you Charlie. Charlie. It's going to get worse. Oh my god. We have to... There's no use running. Harriet, Jack, and Megan are already dead. Run! Run! Ah! Come on, keep going! <laughs> I'm so scared! <laughs> Taylor! Oh my god, Taylor! Oh my god. Who, who are you? Finally. No running this time. <laughs> Right then, so thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed uh, watching our virtual cinema screening. Now, on to the awards. Emily, over to you for the film ambassadors. And I've got the amazing job of announcing who our next film ambassadors will be. So for Red Group, our next film ambassador will be Ben. So congratulations, Ben. Our film ambassador for Blue Group is going to be Jesse. So well done, Jesse. And then for Green Group, our film ambassador is going to be Alexandro. So well done, guys. Really hard work. Um, and I really look forward to uh, seeing what you're going to do as our film ambassador. Thank you for that, Emily. Right then, so I would like to announce the dance captains. So in Green Group, I would like to announce that the dance captain is Isabel. And in blue group, the dance captain is Maisie. And in red group, the dance captain is Molly. Well done, guys. And now we have our drama ambassadors for each colour group. So in green group, our drama ambassador is Tilly, congratulations. And in blue group, it is Rhea, congratulations. And in red group, it is Jamie, congratulations. And finally, our last two awards go to Head Boy and Head Girl. So, Head Boy for 12 months from now is Ryan, congratulations. And our head girl for the next 12 months is Gabby. Congratulations, guys. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday morning with us. It's been fantastic uh, having the virtual cinema screening. Obviously, we can't meet face to face at the moment, but soon we will be able to. We are hoping that we're going to be reopening our doors on Saturday, the 17th of April, when obviously guidelines permitting us to do so and we really, really can't wait to see you guys. So thank you so much for your continued support and stay safe until then. And obviously we're gonna continue with PQA Live until we meet back face to face again. Thank you so much and have a great day and thank you once again. Bye guys.